Law Warrior Online. TR1 Wraith. Overview. Long known as the primary manufacturers of water purification systems in the Free Worlds League, Curtis Hydra Systems faced an uncertain future because of spiraling costs. Seeking to expand into more profitable markets, Curtis formed a new division. Devoted to using recovered technology to produce state-of-the-art military hardware, Curtis Militech quickly created the specifications for its debut battle mech design. Analysts who had scoffed at the idea of Curtis entering the military hardware market were surprised when the new division unveiled the TR-1 Wraith, a far cry from the water cooler on legs that some experts had predicted. Capabilities Speed and maneuverability are the keystones of the Wraith's design. Weapons and armor came secondary to cramming the massive LTV 385XL engine into a medium chassis. With an endo-steel internal structure and more than 8 ton of advanced ferrofibrous armor, the interior is extremely cramped. Curtis designer squeezed advanced Tronol pulse lasers onto the mech to provide heavy and accurate short-range firepower. Sacrificing range for accuracy, the pulse lasers call for the Wraith to use its speed to close with an enemy, strike, and then withdraw. With only 10 heat sinks, only such tactics can allow the mech to vent the heat generated by simultaneous use of lasers and the compact Curtis Jet jump jets. Initially, the race detractors claimed that the mech's unique design would make battlefield repair near impossible. Curtis countered these arguments with a liberal warranty and produced replacement parts to be shipped with each unit. Deployment In service, the Wraith has proven difficult to employ well. Like the CGR-1A1 Charger, to which critics often compared the design, the Wraith has the speed and durability to act as a heavy scout, but lacks the long-range firepower to deal with lighter and less expensive scout hunters. The same lack of long-range punch makes it ill-suited to serving in the line of battle. With Free Wills League units along the Marek Steiner border still struggling to find a niche for the Wraith, Curtis has had more success selling it on the general market. The Capellan Confederation and Draconis Combine have both purchased the Wraith, as have the Word of Blake and Independent Mercenary Commands. Lately, commanders have started to assign the Wraith to independent-minded or difficult, say, mech warriors. Serving as skirmishers or fast raiders, it looks as if the Innisfere has finally figured out how to employ Curtis's exceptional design effectively. A battalion of Hannibal's hermits employed a perfect example of these tactics against a nest of bandits operating in the Chaos March. While the hermits' speedy wraiths skirmished with the bandits, pinning them in place, the rest of the mercenary force flanked their position and fell upon them from behind. Variants Curtis appears content with its creation and has produced no official variants. Some individuals have modified the mech in the field, replacing the Tronel 13 large pulse laser with an extended range PPC. The Word of Blake has also modified the Wraith, replacing the medium pulse lasers on one jump with two extended range medium lasers and an improved C3 system. Both versions require time consuming armor modifications, whose unsightly bulges mar the Wraith's rather sleek profile. Notable Mech Warriors Lien Zhang, Aris Sung. Outspoken, audacious, and willful, Aris Sung is perfectly suited to the task of piloting his Wraith. A member of House Hiritsu, Sung entered the Capellan Warrior House through the unconventional approach of penetrating Hiritsu's security and then allowing himself to be caught. Dedicated to House Hiritsu and the Capellan Confederation, Sung was one of the few voices for moderation during the St. Ives conflict. His actions spared many civilians, who otherwise would have been slaughtered by fanatical Lao troops. Major Charles Duval Executive Officer of the mercenary unit Hannibal's Hermits, Duval commands the Hermits' 1st Battalion from the cockpit of his Wraith. The mech is one of many that the regiment has acquired since signing on with the Word of Blake. The Mercurial Duval and his Wraith are well suited to one another, with the Major leading his battalion as they rooted out the Chaos March bandits that had been threatening Keed until they joined the new Word of Blake Protectorate in early 3056. Ah yes, the Wraith. I love the I love the artwork in the update version, which you'll you'll see on this. If I hadn't put it first, I probably won't probably be second. But yeah, the new art for the Wraith looks really good actually. Um This I'm not quite sure what the insect kind of design is with the Wraith, but yeah, the design is good. I I, I just like it. It's uh, I also have a soft spot for mechs that in universe don't have a very good niche, like 
just like the Charger. I, I think this is really fun. It's 35, uh, sorry, 55 ton again. The chassis is the Curtis Rafe. Its power plant is the LTV 385 EL. A cruise of 76, a max speed of 119, with Curtis Jet 55, giving it 210 meters of jump. Armour is Calon Free Worlds League Special Ferrofibrous, and it's armed with a single large pulse and two medium pulse of the Tronel 13 and 12 variety, manufactured by Curtis Militech. Primary factory, Paradise. Communication system is a Curtis Com Mark 1, and targeting and tracking is provided by Dynatech 2780. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those. I'd love to see this in something like MechWarrior Line, MechWarrior Five, um, like HBS BattleTech mods, any of those kind of things. Uh, it's 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 a fun little mech. Um, the heat sinks are doubles at least, so it's still it still sinks twenty heat, which isn't bad. Um, its armor is okay, twenty three on the CT, eighteen on the left and right torso. Um, 14 on the arms and 20 on the legs, which is, yeah, okay across the board for 55 ton. Its speed is incredible, though, 7, 11, 7, uh, uh, walk, run, and jump, which means it can cross a fair amount of distance for a 55 tonner. All right, it's not getting up to the speeds of some of the light mechs, but then it's not meant to. So, yeah, its ability to literally charge in, fire all its weapons, and keep running past into cover is really good. And, um, yeah, uh, it's just a fun looking mech and uh, again I, I, I've said it in the past I like these designs that aren't perfect at the job that they were built for you know the, it gives a little bit more realism to the universe when something that comes out struggles a little bit so um, and, and it has to find a niche or it just never gets picked up in large numbers so it's just one of those mechs that just struggles they exist but not many people want to use them and it's kind of fun for that reason there's a little narrative behind a little bit of character so yeah, um, quite like it, the Wraith. So, um, that's all i got to say on that one. Uh, what do you think about it? But uh, have a good one, everybody. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>